celebrate. We celebrate our King, King Jesus. Father, how I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, praising you and thanking you and blessing you in the name, Lord. We exalt you, Father God. Father God, there's nothing too hard for you. You are great God and greatly to be praised. Father, you are amazing. You are a miracle worker. You are our provider. You are our supplier, Lord. I thank you. I bless your name. What, Lord, you are worthy, worthy of all of our praise. We give you honor. We give you glory, Father God. Because there's nobody like you. Nobody can do us like you, Lord. And we thank you. We bless you. Oh, we magnify the name of the Lord. For your name for you is so powerful. Even calling on the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, there's healing. Healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I bless your name, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord. And Father God, right now, I ask you right now, allow your spirit to go to and fro, Father God. Because there is a river of miracles that working, Father God. We thank you for the miracle, Lord. We thank you for supplying all of our needs. We thank you that you make a way out of no way. We thank you for you equipping us. Father, we thank you for your anointing. Your anointing is in this house. We thank you for your presence, Father God. And Father, we ask you to continue to bless the praise team. Oh, Father, use them, Father God, in the song that they will proclaim and they will exalt your name, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for your protection. We thank you, Lord, Father God. You are equipping each and every one of us. Father, we thank you for the gift. The gift is your power to operate in the body of Christ. Lord, we thank you that you are get a hold of Pastor Troy and allow the anointing to fall fresh on him. Continue to equip him and guide and lead him. Protect him Father. Allow the words to flow out of his mouth. From his heart to his mouth, Father. Allow the words to flow to our ears and our heart that we will line up with your words. Lord. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Father. Father, continue to bless each one of us. Allow deliverance to be in this house, Father God. Oh, Father, allow worship. We may worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, I thank you and I bless you. I exalt you because you are Hosanna, Hosanna. Lord, we glorify your name. And I thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us in spite of us. Lord, we bless your name. We ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. And it reads, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived, and there came and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. That's Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Did you come to worship with us today? Did you come to worship with us today? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. Philippians 2 and 9 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of the things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Did you come to worship the Christ today? We came to declare that we celebrate a great God. Hallelujah. Just put your hands together like this. There you go. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Stronger, stronger when we pray. 
Savior, I thank God. Everybody in here got a reason to thank God this morning. So that's a child just worship with us this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. This bag of bones. I try with all my mind. I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. Oh, vagabond. And just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not. Thank 
God. We thank you, God. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. You are free. I am free. Hell lost another one. Hell lost another one. I am free. 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 Hell lost another one. Hell lost another one. I am free. 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 Hell lost another one. Hell lost another one. I am free. 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 Hell lost another one. Hell lost another one. I am free. 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 Hell lost another one. Hell lost another one. I am free. 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 Because you pick me up. Pick me up. Turn me around. Turn me around. Raise my feet. Raise my feet on solid ground. I've been the master. I've been the savior. Because you heal my heart. Heal my heart. Change my name. Change my name. the blessing say praise praise the lord hallelujah i'm free now you got a reason to give god some praise everybody in this room is free this morning hallelujah come on and help me say yeah say i am free i am guests please stand any first time guests amen Amen. hallelujah well on behalf of everybody here we say welcome to the fellowship of faith we know you could have worshiped anywhere else today but you choose to worship with us and on the count of three we're gonna say welcome one two three welcome (laughs) our helps ministers will hand you a connection card just fill it out and give it back to them Welcome to the Fellowship of Faith, where Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. 
Do we have any birthdays? Any birthdays in the past week? Please stand. Yay! <laughs> On the count of three, let's say happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Do we have any anniversaries? Any anniversaries? Please stand. No anniversaries? Well, we thank God for marriages. Amen. Well, my name is Natalie, and these are your morning announcements. So, Sunday school. Everybody say Sunday school. Sunday school. At the Madison campus after worship and here before worship, we have Sunday school. On Monday, April 15th, that is tomorrow, the men of faith will have a gathering. They will have a fellowship meal at 5.30 p.m., and then discipleship will be at 6.15 p.m. Saturday, April 20th, we have intercessory prayer at 8.30 a.m., and the youth ministry will meet at 12 noon. Also, Mr. Alex Ward, he's having a worship night. Let's give a round of applause for Alex. <laughs> Alex is having a worship night here at the Huntsville campus at 6 p.m. this Saturday, Saturday, April the 20th. So come on out and worship with us. Sunday, April 21st, it is our ministry fair. Everybody say, get connected. Get connected. Amen. We have several outlets that you can plug into and get connected. So come to that ministry fair and get in where you fit in, okay? April 27th, that is a Saturday. We will have intercessory prayer at 8.30 a.m., our associate ministers will meet at 9 a.m. Our youth ministry will meet at noon. And then our Feeding by Faith ministry will also meet. Sunday, April 28th, that is our young adult brunch mixer at 11 a.m. in the fellowship hall. So all the young adults can come out and mix around, okay? <laughs> Sunday, May 12th, and Pentecost Sunday are both coming up. Mother's Day is May 12th, and Pentecost Sunday is May 19th. And lastly, congregational care. Please pray for the following people. Sister Leslie Johnson and Brother Richard Daniels. It is now time to give. <laughs> Here at the Fellowship of Faith, you can give electronically in the following ways. We have Giveify, PayPal, Cash App. You can mail it to the church. You can come by the church. Or as our helps ministry come, you can place it in the basket. Who's giving with a cheerful heart? I am. Amen. <laughs> well, we're going to stand. We're going to pray. I love y'all, and y'all have a great week. Amen. Let us go to the Lord for a word of prayer. As everyone stands that is able to. God help ministry to come. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to give back unto the Lord a portion of that which he has blessed us with. Amen. And the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, we come as humbly as we know how before your throne of grace, before your throne of glory, with bowed heads and humility in our hearts. Father, we want to first just lift you up and exalt you, glorify you, and magnify you. For you and you alone are worthy of all the honor, glory, and the praise. Now, in the name of Jesus, we just ask you to bless these tithes and these offerings, Father, that you continue to bless this church to continue to do great and awesome things to bring you glory. We thank you for all those that give from a cheerful heart, and we pray for those that have a desire to give but have none to give, that in due season they too will be able to give. Thank you for all your bountiful blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day. Have your way, touch every heart and mind to give as you so fit to give, for them to give. For it's in the precious, mighty, omnipotent, holy name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, we do pray. And let us all say together, amen, amen, amen.
I can't thank him enough. Because he is the king of glory. He is mighty in power. He is the king of healing. He is everything that we need, amen. Can I get anybody to testify to that? Anybody to testify to that? If you are in a shame, you should say, thank you, Lord Jesus. today, right? Hallelujah. Somebody can't sing praises unto him this morning. But we're going to sing praises unto him. Hallelujah. Because he is the king of glory. Hallelujah. And I say yes. I say yes to his will. I say yes to his way. Will anybody say yes with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of Yes, 
about the name of Jesus. If you don't mind, let's just practice it. Everybody shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Sing that chorus again. I wish I could sing. Lord have mercy. 
something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweet, sweetest name I love. And oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Amen. Come on, church. What's this name? Who woke you up this morning? Who blessed you? Who saved you? Who forgave you? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. What's his name? Have you ever been in trouble and you just call that name? Have you ever felt bad and you just call that name? Call on the name of the Lord. Somebody shout Jesus. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. loving, friendly, faith-filled congregation. We thank our virtual audience for being here. We, we, we are a praying church. Uh, son of Deneen, Matthew and Deneen Moore fractured his hip and he's in worship. Where is he at today? Where is he at today? Where is he at today? Outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. Amen. He fractured his hip and is, is in worship. You know, we, we break a fingernail, you understand. And we stay out a week or two. Somebody say amen. A month, amen. But he's in worship. Let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate that. Yes, yes. The night of worship is going to be at the Madison campus. What's that date again? This Saturday is going to be at the Madison campus. It's going to be at the Madison campus. Looking forward to it. And also on the bulletin, Saturday the 27th is new members orientation. Saturday the 27th at 9 a.m. is the new members orientation. And the fourth Sunday, looking forward to the young adult brunch mixer. It's going to be great. The young adult brunch mixer on the fourth Sunday. All right, what book of the Bible are we studying through? Amen, amen. And this morning we come to chapter four. This morning we come to chapter four. I love teaching the Bible. I love studying the Bible. And how about you? Do you love the word of God? Amen. amen. I love the word of God. So even as we are studying through Genesis, Read through Genesis. <clears throat> We're studying uh, from the King James, but read through it through the Message Bible or the NIV. Just read through uh, the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 4. Let's read responsively 1 through 10 and then verse 16. The exposition is going to come through verse 16. But let's read responsively <clears throat> 1 through 10. I, I love the expository model. We'll read it, then we'll teach through it, because we got to get, not only get in the word, but make sure the word gets in us. Somebody say amen. amen. Genesis 4, and I'll begin. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Verse 2. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground 
an offering unto the Lord. Verse 5, but unto Cain and his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And if you do well, thou shalt not be accepted. Or shalt thou not be accepted if you do well? And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at thy door. And unto thee shall his desire, and shalt, thou shalt rule over him. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? Verse 10, let's read together. What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood. And, and then look it down at verse 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod east of Eden. Bow with me for a moment of prayer and meditation before the proclamation. Father, we thank you for your anointed word. And we ask that your anointed word anoint our ears to hear, conform our hearts, renew our minds, build up our faith for faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Your word is like a mirror. So on today, allow your word to work in us, on us, and through us. Again, conforming us into your image. Just as you bless me in the preparation, now bless me in the proclamation. In Jesus' name, let everyone say <clears throat> amen. Lessons from Cain and Abel. Lessons from Cain and Abel. In Genesis chapter 3, we saw the participation of sin with Adam and Eve. In Genesis chapter 4, we see the progression of sin with Cain and Abel. You can clearly see the progression of sin from chapter 3 to chapter 4. From the participation with Adam and Eve to the progression with Cain and Abel. We, we can learn a lot of lessons from these brothers. The first family. Let's get right into our study. Let's get right into our study. Number one, Cain as a worker. I'm in verse 1. Follow along with me. And Adam knew Eve his wife, Adam and Eve, they had a healthy relationship. The word new here deals with the intimacy of marriage. Adam knew Eve. The problem in many relationships is they don't know each other anymore. Help me, Holy Ghost. Or they want to know you without getting to know you. Are y'all following me? Verse 1, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Conception is a gift from God, a blessing from God. They had Cain. Cain was the first baby in the Bible. And humorously, we see them raising Cain. They, fi they finally clicked on what I was saying, huh? We see Adam and Eve raising Cain. The name Cain literally means to get or to acquire. Thus, verse 1 says, I have gotten a man from the Lord. His name literally means to acquire. And many scholars point out the motherly expectation of Eve. Eve thought Cain was the promised seed in Genesis 
So she had expectations for her son. And likely so, rightly so, because mothers always have expectation for their children. But unfortunately, Cain did not turn out the way she expected. So instead of having great expectation, we see great dysfunction. Verse 2, and she again bare his brother Abel. Adam and Eve were being fruitful and multiplying. They have another son, and his name is Abel. Cain means to acquire, but the name Abel, it literally means feeble. On an interesting uh, footnote, one commentator said, it is possible that Cain and Abel were twins like Jacob and Esau. Because of the language in verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 says, and she conceived. But verse 2 says, and she bare again. So it is possible that they were twins because there is one conception and two births. We're not sure of that, but it is possible they were twins. But we do know they were brothers, siblings. In verse 2, we see their occupation, their work. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. Humorously, a little girl went to her mother and asked her, where did the human race come from? The mother explained to her daughter the story of Adam and Eve. The human race came from Adam and Eve. A couple of days later, the little girl asked her dad the same question, where did the human race come from? And he said, many years ago, there were monkeys, and we evolved from monkeys. So now, the little girl is confused, because the mom said this, and the dad said that. So the mom said, I told you my side of the family, and your dad told you about his side of the family. <laughs> <laughs> a merry heart doeth good like a medicine so in verse 2 we see Cain and Abel working their prospective occupations Cain was a farmer and Abel was a shepherd and I want you to know that their work was linked to their worship Cain was a type of Satan because of the murder. And Abel was the type of Christ because of his sacrifice. Number two, we see Cain as a worshiper. And again, their work was tied to their worship. Verse three, we see their offering, their worship. Verse three, <laughs> and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. Cain gives an offering to the Lord. He gives to God that which God gave to him. He, he, he gave him an offering from the ground. Verse 4, and Abel, he also brought the firstlings of the flock and the fat thereof. Cain gives an offering, but Abel also gives an offering to the Lord. He gives a sacrifice. We can clearly see the comparison and contrast of their offerings. Cain's offering was just something he just did going through the motions. He did it half-heartedly, whereas Abel's offering was the best. They, 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 they both gave an offering, but, but notice God's response or God's reaction to their offerings. Verse 4, God accepted Abel's offering. Verse 5, God rejected Cain's offering. The lesson is, you do know there is a right way and a wrong way to approach God. Help me, Holy Ghost. If, if, if you think you can live any kind of way Monday through Saturday and half-heartedly worship God on Sunday, you're wrong. 
It don't work like that. You, you just can't give God any old kind of thing and think he's going to accept it. Why did God reject Cain's offering and accept Abel's offering? Cain's offering represents human achievement. It, it grew out of the ground. This is what I have done. Abel's offering represents divine atonement based upon what you have done. So the difference in their offerings was their motives. Cain's motive was based on the flesh, what I did. Abel's uh, motive was based on faith, what you did. The Bible is the best commentary on the Bible. Hebrews 11, 4 says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. How many of you know God see your giving? He, he really looks at your heart before he sees what's in your hand. And it being dead, yet speaking. So the difference was in faith. Everybody shout faith. Cain gave out of his flesh. Abel gave by faith. So the text is tailored to teach us about our motive in giving. Why do you give? Do you want God to see your achievement? Why do you give? Or is it based on what God has done for you? Why do you give? Here, listen to this, listen to this. It is not about the amount you give, but the attitude in which you give. <laughs> because God is not looking at what's in your hand more so than how he's looking at what's in your heart. It's not about the amount you gave. It's about the attitude in which you give. Because Abel gave his best. Cain, he was just given just to be given. He was just going through the motions and thought God was going to accept it. It's not in the amount you give. It's the attitude in which you give. You remember Ananias and Sapphira? It wasn't the amount they gave. It was the attitude in which they gave. And God killed them in church. You remember the widow who gave her last mite? It wasn't about the amount she gave. It was about the attitude in which she gave. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. Every man, according as he has purpose in his heart. Everybody shout hard. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. The, 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 the heart. Without the heart, it's not worship. It's just a stage play. Just play act. Worship is not going through the motions. Worship is about your emotions being moved to obedience. Notice how, verse 5, how Cain reacted and responded to God. He was mad. I'm talking about furious. Look at the language in verse 5. It says he was very wroth. Not just wroth, but very wroth. And then watch what the text says. And his countenance failed. His anger showed up in his attitude. The danger of anger. As the hymn says, if you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show. Turn around and smile at somebody, smile at somebody, smile at somebody. The danger of anger. Cain was mad when he should have been meek. Cain was angry when he should have been appreciative. His response should have been, God, I thank you. God, I love you. But instead, he was mad. And there are a lot of people mad at God because God doesn't see things that way. Mad at God. And I also, there are a lot of people mad at you because God has blessed you. What you mad at me for? He blessed you too. Cain 
was mad at God and jealous of his brother. The, 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 the seed of anger, the seed of envy, ultimately it becomes murder. And his envy and his anger got the best of him. The danger of anger. Anger unchecked or unbridled is dangerous. Ephesians 4, 26, be angry and sin not. If you're going to be angry, be mad at what God is mad at. But then it says, don't go to bed being angry. Somebody, I need to say that again. Don't go to bed mad. Help me, Holy Ghost. Ephesians 4, 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger be put away from you. The danger of anger. Colossians 3 and 8. But now you also put off these things. Anger, wrath, malice. Having unhealthy emotions. I mean, you, you're like a walking volcano. You will erupt at any moment. Angry, feel marriage. Anger, field friends. Anger-filled ministry. Anger-filled job. You go to work, man. Beware of anger. Proverbs 15, 18. A wrathful man stirs up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeases strife. Quit, quit living mad. Verse 6, verse 6. God engages in a conversation with Cain. Watch what he says. Why are you mad? Why has your countenance fallen or changed? God is asking someone today. He's having a conversation as I'm, I'm teaching. God is speaking. What you mad for? What you mad at? All this negative energy. What, what, what you mad for? Who you mad at? Help me, Holy Ghost. Your countenance has changed. Verse 7, God tells Cain, watch this now, if you do well, you will be accepted. All you had to do was just give me your best. Verse 7, sin is lying at your door. Watch this now. And unto thee shall be his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. That, that is, listen to me now. That is, make sure you get this. You better deal with sin before sin deals with you. Mm -hmm. Whatever your proclivity is, you better deal with it before it deals with you. Anger, you better deal with anger before anger deals with you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Jude. 1, 11, woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. The, the way of Cain is you have allowed your sinful proclivity to master you. Your, your, your sin has mastered you instead of you allowing God to master your sin. The way of Cain. Verse 8, Cain has a conversation with his brother Abel. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm just wondering how that conversation went. We're we, we talking about his brother now. Verse 8, and it came to pass when they were in the field. I ain't, I'm sure they, ain't, they weren't talking about sports. <laughs> that Cain rose up against Abel, his own brother. Think about it now. His own brother. Family dysfunction. We, we, we see it all the time, especially... Uh, unfortunately, at funerals, you mad at your brother. You mad at your sister. What you mad for? Lord, have mercy. And slew him. Cain's anger got the best of him. He killed his brother Abel. Cain became the first murderer in the Bible. Thus, he is a type of Satan. Listen at this, 1 John 3, 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. 
Lord, have mercy. Envy is a dangerous thing. Listen, if your friend can't celebrate you, they ain't your friend. I'm talking about people just mad, just living life mad. Wake, wake up mad. Go to bed mad. What you mad for? Jealous. Don't, don't live your life jealous because if God blessed your brother, if God blessed your neighbor, guess what? He's in the neighborhood. Can I get a witness here? Cain premeditated this. He was a murderer in his heart long before he killed him with his hand. The Bible is the best commentary on the Bible. First John 3 and 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil. His own works were evil. And his brother's righteous. Notice, First John 3 and 12, that Cain was labeled as being a part of the wicked one. Remember I told you, he's a type of Satan. Now, this malicious attack on Abel signifies the satanic attack on the sea. You, you, you remember God promised in Genesis 3:15 that the, the seed of the woman, th this is, uh, uh, signifies spiritual warfare. Satan has always been after the seed. Verse 9, verse 9, God asks, where is Abel thy brother? You can hear the sarcasm in Cain's voice as he replies, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? Listen, it behooves us not to get smart with God. <laughs> but, but what a great question this is. Am I my brother's keeper? Great question. Listen, when you have a true friend that genuinely cares about you, that's a blessing. Because there is accountability when you are your brother's keeper. There is encouragement, a shoulder to lean on, a, a, a listening ear when you are your brother's keeper. There is protection, prevention, and pro, a, pro, provision when, when you are your brother's keeper. Can I get a witness here? I am my brother's keeper. People often say, that ain't none of my business. L listen to me. We live in a kingdom corporate community. So let me ask you, are you your brother's keeper, your sister's keeper? Why didn't you say something to help them? Why didn't you invite them to church? Why didn't you confront that issue? Because there is something to be said about the sin of silence. You are your brother's sister's keeper. Verse 10, God says, what have you done, your brother's Blood is speaking from the ground. He's getting ready to pronounce judgment upon Cain. Verse 11, God cursed the ground. He cursed the serpent. Now Cain is being cursed. So number three, we now see in verse 13, verse 12, Cain as a wanderer. Verse 12, God says, when you till the ground, it's going to be hard, the toil of your work. Here's what I want you to see. In verse 12 following, we see pictures of sin. Cain is lost, walking in darkness, and that's what sin is. Sin is being lost, walking in darkness. Watch what Cain has the audacity to say. Verse 12, he says, my punishment is too much. Again, we see pictures of sin. There are consequences to sin. As my grandmama would say, you made that bed, so therefore you must lie in it. Anybody heard that before? There are consequences to sin. The, he said the punishment is too much. Verse 14 Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. You can clearly see pictures of sin 
Cain is ousted. Sin brings about separation. You are separated from God. Verse 14b, again, we see pictures of sin. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that find me shall slay me. Sin deceives. In verse 14, it is as if he forgot what he did. He's playing the victim. He's the one who committed murder. He's the one who did this. Verse 15, and the Lord said unto him, therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Wow, everybody shout grace. Because Cain deserves death. But God, instead of Cain, in lieu of Cain, he protected Cain as an act of grace. We see pictures of sin. You and I, we deserve death, but thank God he protects us still with his grace. Oh, everybody shout grace. Come on now, you and I were just like Cain, but, but thank God for his grace. <laughs> Verse 15b, and the Lord set a mark upon Cain. Watch what it says. Lest any finding him should kill him. Now we saw the motive of Cain in giving. Many have asked, what is the mark of Cain in living? Some have stated, some uh, commentators have stated that the mark of Cain was a tattoo. I don't know about that, but I do know whatever it was, it was an identification mark, an identifying mark of protection. The mark of Cain. God provided grace to Cain and protected Cain with this distinguishing mark, the mark of Cain. Let me say it like this, the the, the mark of Cain. God has blessed you, but you are ungrateful. God gave to you, but but you are like you, you deserved it. The mark of Cain. You you, you deserve death, but you are still alive. Somebody say amen right there. Verse 16. And Cain, watch this now, went out from the presence of the Lord. Again, you can see pictures of sin. He's out of the will of God and dwelt in the land of Nod, east of Eden. You can see pictures of sin. Cain is out of the will of God. Cain is away from the presence of God, not living in Eden, but wandering in the land of Nod. And I want you to know that that, that, that there is a difference between Eden and Nod. Nod, he was just wandering. Eden was a place of worshiping. Eden... It's, it's, it's our ultimate destination. Nod describes many unbelievers. Nod is the place outside of God's will. And Eden represents being in God's will. Nod represents being lost. Eden represents the love of God. Nod represents being alone. Eden represents God's presence and God's provision. Again, Nod represents wandering, but Eden represents worshiping. Nod represents sin. Eden represents salvation. Because you do know in Eden there was the tree of life that the angels were protecting. Can I get a witness here? So this morning, uh, we can learn from Abel to always give God your best. Can I get a witness here? Abel is a type of Christ because Abel gave his best. Abel is a type of Christ because he gave a sacrifice. 
And uh, when God uh, gave us Jesus, he gave us the best sacrifice. Can I get a witness here? So we can learn from Abel uh, to give God our best. From Cain, we learn, just go through the motion just to be doing it uh, and think God is going to accept it. Well, I came by to tell you, uh, you ain't got to be mad. Uh, you ain't got to be jealous. Can I get a witness here? Yeah, because God uh, is our source and uh, he will bless you. Can I get a witness here? Or shall I say, he has blessed you. And therefore, because God has blessed you, uh, you ought to be like Abel and give him your best. Can I get a witness? I'm like Elder T now. Give him your best praise. Can I get a witness? God gave his best, so give him your best praise. Come on, church, give him your best praise. Give him your best praise. Ain't he all right? If you know it all right, say yes. Say yes. Come on, church. Give him your best praise. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. When, when, when you think about it, oh, Lord, we... We, we deserve death like Cain, but, but, but he blessed us. He graced us anyway. You ought to open up your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. Lift up those hands and say, Father, I thank you. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say yeah. Say yeah. Come on, give him your best praise. Give him your best praise. Everyone standing, everyone standing, everyone standing. Whatever your sinful proclivity is, sin lieth at your door. You better deal with it before it deals with you. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's jealousy. Whatever it is. Maybe it's alcoholism, drug addiction, whatever it is. Give it to the master. Let him master it for you. If you don't mind, lift up those hands. Lift up those hands. In surrender and just ask God to do surgery on you. Ask God to do surgery on you. God, my sinful proclivity, I ask that you will deal with it. I confess it right now. Work on me. Work through me. You are the potter. I am the clay. Father, we ask that you will just work on us. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen. Number one, number one, you need a savior. Jesus wants to save you. All you have to do is believe. Jesus died on the cross, was buried, rose again. If you believe that and confess that, you are saved. If that's you, meet, meet, meet us at this altar. Meet us at this altar. Jesus wants to be your savior. Number two, you need a pastor. I would love to be your pastor. Jeremiah 3.15, God says, And I give you pastors after mine own heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Number one, salvation. Meet us at this altar. There is a little bit of Cain in all of us, and we need God to help us with that issue. Number one, will you come? Salvation. Number two, discipleship. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? As they lead us in a song of invitation, will you come? Will you come?
Jessica Obi just gave her life to Christ. Hallelujah! Yeah. Come on, give God praise in this place. He just added another soul to the kingdom. Come on, give God praise in this place. He's worthy of our praise, amen. Glory to his name, glory to his name. Did you enjoy that word on today? Give God praise for our pastor, amen. Amen. Don't forget Bible study on Wednesday nights at 6.33. Bible study on Wednesday nights at 6.33. We'd love for it to look like this right here. We're not here alone. We would love for it to look like this. But if you cannot, please watch us on Facebook and YouTube. Amen? Also, the Feeding by Faith, they're going to meet at 4.30 at the down, Downtown Rescue Mission. Raise your hand back there, Sister Lord. See, Sister Lord, if you're interested in teaming up with the Fellowship of Faith and the Feeding by Faith Committee. Amen? If God did anything great for you today, give him your best praise. I said, if he did anything great for you today, give him your best praise. Glory to his name. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way. The songwriter said, if God can't do it, it can't be done. Because God can do anything. Now, come on, give him your best praise. Oh, you got more than that. He's done a lot of great things for you, amen? Glory to his name. Stand all over the building as we get ready to go. Stand all over the building as we get ready to go. Youth, remember our youth mixer. mixer make sure y'all, all our youth come to there. Bring your sons and daughters to that. Please come out and be a part of that youth, amen? Now, Father, as you lead this place, so not your presence, that your people obey your word today and throughout this week. My prayer is that you would chase them down and overtake them with blessings for it. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Come and greet the preacher. Thank you.